Hello everyone. As I mentioned in my Havoc Troopers Icebreaker solo, I was moving on to a combo heavy character and going light on weapon damage. Well, as expected, that led to a string of failures, so to break up the tedium, I started alternating runs with the Exemplar, and he just happened to land a completed solo first. So here we are. A couple things of note. Um, as I mentioned, I'm using a combo heavy setup, but I haven't taken the increased combo damage in radius. I've gone with the lingering combo AoE effect thing that I can't remember the name of, um, and increased power duration, since that power duration also applies to how long my barricades last, and I'm going to be using those a lot. Not unlike my Havoc Trooper run, I have a to-do list before the wave starts, break the window, and destroy canisters 1. And two. Now I wait until just before the wave starts and plan a barricade in the door near LZ to force everything to come through that far door. And since I didn't take combo damage in radius, the barricade is going to last 30 seconds instead of 25. Now that may not seem like much, but the longer the barricade lasts, the easier the wave is. The goal for wave 1 is the same as it was with the Havoc Trooper, get out without using any more than a single ammo pack if even that. Oh, and my in-game language is currently set to French because why not? It's been about 20 years, but once upon a time I was almost fluent in French as well. So let's consider this an Andromedian review course. Fun fact, French also has a dialogue option which breaks up the monotony of hearing the same lines for the billionth time. And French Kandros sounds like he might actually be good at his job because we all know English Kandros, not so much. On wave 1, if I get overrun, it's safe to back up slightly and plant a barricade to protect myself, which should last long enough to close out the wave. There goes that first ammo pack. Now, my accent's gone to shit, but vague de récupération, recovery or retrieval. On a détecté des objets de valeur dans la zone de la mission. Trouvez-les et retournez au site de largage. Très bien. Destructeur en approche. Objet récupéré. Artefact sécurisé.
For the most part, assuming the objective always pops across the map, the Angaran speed boost gets you there with enough time to pick it up without needing to place a barricade first. But this spot always draws fire either from observers or from a destroyer, so I'll drop a barricade here. There goes my first health pack. I'll burn my second health pack here and risk placing a barricade in the door, which will stop the destroyers in their tracks until the barricade is gone. If you're wondering why, it's because that far door is the magic door that I mentioned during my Havoc Trooper run. Large enemies that usually break door frames won't go through it. But I think the fact that it's there is what makes the destroyers stop. Normally, if there's only one path they can take and you block it with a barricade, they just walk right over the barricade. But since there's technically two paths, it doesn't break my barricade, and since the other door is part of the matrix or whatever, the destroyers just stop as long as I keep myself out of line of sight of the door or windows, where they'll path over to those areas to try and shoot me through those openings. want to make sure I have time to set up for wave 3, so I'll kite the destroyer a little closer to my defensive spot before I kill it. That'll do. Just like wave 1, I block the door to funnel everything through the far door, and hopefully I'll drop a Krogan or two before I have to make my tactical escape. On that note, just like the Havoc Trooper run, the first order of business is killing five Krogan to get them out of the equation and make the wave easy. Second ammo pack to keep the paw going. Approche. 
All right, that's job one done. With the Krogan gone, I continue my kite as necessary, killing sharpshooters and nullifiers as I go. Hard pass on being shot in the back. Get there before the nullifier fires. I guess that's one way to waste a revive. Exit. 
Excellent. Ouvrez l'œil. Vous apprenez vite Vague 4. Appareil. Devices. Destructeur en approche. Nos avant-postes les Hydre sur le terrain. The same situation with the anointed has played out several times and I don't always come out on top. So I'm going to cross my fingers. Enemies should be far enough behind that I don't have to go behind the railing to grab this one. Now, this spot, like that wave 2 one, is open from a long ways off, so I'm going to drop a barricade to grab the device. Anyone else think this is about to go bad? It's like we were right. Second revive gone. Now I block the door and kill the trash as it funnels through the far end. See there? I can still be targeted through the window, so instead of freezing when I drop the barricade, the blaze is path close enough to fire, but has stopped there since it can't actually come through the door. I'll offer my first RPG to the left hand of Doom, and regret that when wave 6 rolls around. Shit, plan was to re-up my barricade there, but the breachers got in the way and messed it up. Third revive gone. Sneaky blaze, Hydra. The left hand of doom is clever indeed. To save a health pack, I'm going to hold my position and shoot to siphon health, and then bait the blaze Hydra's melee, which is when I'm going to run away while it can't shoot. This spot is another one of those finicky spots that I mentioned in the last video. Depending on where you place barricades here, the large enemies will consider the path blocked and divert to alternate access points. Now, there is a spot here where you can fit a barricade without making that happen, but I'm about to miss it a bunch and watch my puppets dance as I frustrate myself. For fuck's sake, th this'll have to do. Vague 5. Tout est sans mauvais. Kill without moving. For this wave, I'm going to set up in my defensive position and move as little as possible to keep the Jenny from activating. And we'll go through that in double time and move right on to wave 6. Je 
Well, that's going to do it for the trash mobs. Now I'm going to burn another two minutes killing the Jenny without activating it. And we're going to do that in double, double time. For the most part, I don't entirely miss the heavy weapon damage that I usually run, but right here, it, it felt like it took forever. Bagsis. I mean, boss. That one's self-explanatory. If I don't sound enthusiastic, it's because when it comes to manageable objectives that I've lost on Wave 6, boss waves trump everything. Two destroyers and a Blaze Hydra are fun enough to try and avoid, but when you have to stand your ground more or less to drop a Jenny, the shit gets real ninja quick. Here I'm going to break through the middle of the map to try and hopefully keep the enemies behind the Jenny while I burn through my RPGs. That was almost an RPG to the gods there. And here's where I remember that I needlessly burned an RPG a few waves ago on that Blaze Hydra. Rookie mistake, linguist. Now things go off the rails. I blocked that door to stop the other big enemies from moving, but I was hope- Fucking Blaze Hydra, he said as though it was his mantra. Fourth revive gone. Last revive gone, and for the life of me, I don't know why I didn't drop a barricade immediately. I just sat there waiting to die. Getting hung up on that doorway wasn't part of the plan, and we all know our friend the Blaze Hydra noticed. Gonna risk death to barricade the door, and now I have 30 seconds of relative peace to try and clear the field before the barricade's gone. Burn my third ammo pack there, a little early actually, but I wanted to make sure the paw wasn't going to run out. When the barricade disappears, because of the duration bonuses that I have, I actually have about 8 more seconds of a ghost barricade before it's fully gone. I thought I was good here, but with the blaze unable to shoot through the window, it pathed to be able to fire from the doorway, and in doing so, it broke the barricade. And that's my third health pack gone.
tire dessus. I don't even need to say it, do I? Okay, now I'm good. From here, and with the assistance of my good friend, the Magic Doorway, I can handle both destroyers with relative ease. The ghost barricade has them thinking the path to me is blocked, so they're diverting. But the magic doorway has my back. I'll use an ammo pack right there for a quick barricade refill, and then set up to drop these last two. I'm gonna leave the last one alive just long enough to get into position for wave 7. And I'm not doing a teleport setup this time because, like I said in the last video, I haven't managed to get anyone other than the Havoc Trooper all the way back to LZ. I'm just looking to set up in a nice safe spot and watch the Wave 7 timer tick away. You know how happy I would be if this game would just let me cheat without a hassle? Seriously? But this did end up leading to a nice little discovery. Silver linings, people. They're real. So this position for placing a barricade and getting the destroyer to, to repath was wholly new information for me. I had never done this before. So even though I was kind of miffed that I had to come out of my hidey hole, it's paid off with little tidbits of knowledge that are always good to know. And it also makes it easier to deal with missing the ledge. There we go. Okay, Rosie. Don't fail me now. Atta girl. And now we wait for extraction in double time. On my Havoc Trooper run, a destroyer was in my way going to extraction. It had spawned in my usual defensive spot. So as I'm waiting here, I'm doing a few turns to try and pinpoint where it's the loudest, and I can be relatively sure that it's spawned in that same spot again, especially since the red dot that's over there isn't moving. So instead of going through that room like I usually would, I'm going to go across its roof and hold up just above LZ and then jump into extraction at the buzzer. Here we go. Mes boucliers sont neutralisés. I'll use my fourth health pack to state my paranoia, and we're good. Extraction complete. First exemplar solo in the bag. Now it's time to get back to the character I was originally trying to do this with, and I can't help but wonder what kind of sinister retribution the RNG is going to have in store for me. But that's going to be a video for another day. Until then, thanks for watching.